Well, my first video on replica watches um, was really interesting, I think, in terms of its comment and uh, how how people feel about replicas or fakes, as they're sometimes called. And certainly all the, um, the feedback was pretty polar. Tons and tons of people very for, tons of people totally 100% against, and lots of grey areas in the middle of people who I guess are sort of similar to me in the fact that they're, they're willing to contemplate both kinds of watches. And I guess probably that's maybe a little bit unusual and people can't necessarily understand it. But I just thought I'd show you some of my watch collections and starting with the first watch that I had, the first proper watch that I got when I got married and for my engagement, which was a pretty expensive watch at the time, Ebel. I still think its strap is one of the most beautiful straps that have ever been created for a watch. But this had a quartz movement, and as you can see it's not running at the moment because I haven't changed the battery and seals for a while, but I guess I could get it running. But these days it's probably considered to be a little bit small. So probably the next kind of major purchase that I made is this uh, Rolex uh, Submariner. Uh, you can tell that it's real for those doubters just by listening to the way the, the bezel kind of rotates and the number of clicks. It's a beautiful watch. It's a ceramic Rolex and I have a huge amount of admiration for Rolex and the way they produce their watches. Uh, I've seen a lot, there's quite a few interesting documentaries on YouTube about the, the factory and the processes and the dedication. And uh, even though I do have a a Rolex replica as well, a Deep Sea, as you saw in the last video. I think that the uh, the beauty of this particular watch is beyond any doubt, uh, and it certainly works beautifully, and when it winds, it winds like butter. And um, if you are thinking about one of these watches, uh, although these are expensive, the depreciation on them is virtually non-existent. So providing you buy one secondhand off a trusted seller, they can actually be a very, very good deal. The third um, watch that I'd like to show you is um, a very interesting German watch by um, a watchmaker called Roland Kemner. Uh, it's uh, a tourbillon, so it's actually got, uh, it's manufactured in Germany, but the tourbillon inside it is actually made by Seagull uh, in China. And uh, one of the few places in the world that make these tourbillons, beautiful movement, um, very classic face, uh, ceramic um, um, dial um, and it's got a, a beautiful strap that's been custom made in Horween leather and if I'm going out somewhere in the evening then that's more of a dress watch and I might wear that. Uh, the next one I want to show you uh, is uh, JLC, one of the most amazing watchmakers in the whole world, uh, one of the, the big five probably in terms of watchmakers tradition that goes back an awfully long time and uh, this watch is now celebrating its 80th, 80th, 80th anniversary uh, came from the 1930s and the polo playing tradition and this one is the biggest reverso that's ever been made it's a, got a, a reverso 986 duo uh, it's got two different sides and it is absolutely superb and I do take it out on rare occasions and wear it but it's a limited edition watch and it's really part of my collection rather than to wear day to day. So moving on to the stuff that I do wear day to day, um, I mostly, as I've explained in my previous video, uh, choose to wear replicas day to day. I only ever buy the, be the best that I can find in terms of replicas. I like one-to-one -one replicas. Um, these watches, do tend to cost uh, quite a lot of money relative to the kind of stuff you might find in New York in Canal Street or on holiday in uh, Bangkok. These are particularly good um, replicas where they take the original watch often, take it to pieces and manufacture each part one by one. I know a lot of you disagree, but uh, I don't really like badly designed watches and if I uh, I probably would have to wear something I didn't really like if I didn't buy replicas day to day because I wouldn't want to wear one of my uh, more expensive genuine watches. But as you can see, this one's got a beautiful handmade leather strap. Uh, the movement is not totally 
true. This is a replica of a 19, 1951 FIDI special edition Panerai. Um, they produced, I think, 1950 of these originally. And then uh, this one is clearly a replica. The original one is about £10,000. Uh, next one I want to show you is one that um, I bought, one of the first replicas I bought, actually. The, uh, the original movement was made by a Chinese factory known as H Factory. Um, it was um, a pile of rubbish and a uh, very, very weak movement. And, and uh, what I did is I sent this watch off to a Swiss, um, sorry, a German watchmaker, and I had uh, an ETA movement, a Swiss ETA movement, put into this watch. Uh, and ever since I had it back, it has been absolutely, totally reliable, uh, and it winds very, very well and keeps time very, very well because clearly inside of it is a regular Swiss movement made by uh, ETA, and ETA is owned by the Swatch Company. So uh, that was a nice buy, and that's kind of a nice one that I wear every now and again. The last one I want to show you at the moment is this was uh, when it came out um, about three years ago, two, three years ago. This was made by um, an outfit in China called Noob, and this was their first one-to-one, -one, absolutely ul ultimate replica. And it's a absolutely brilliant replica of a Panerai 243 submersible. Uh, I've taken it in the water. It is actually waterproof. Um, I think it's beautifully made. Um, it's not perfect by any means, and uh, I could have it serviced, and I might have it serviced at some stage. Um, it has, uh, it, it will will keep good time, but when you wind it up, it's a bit rough when it winds. And I think a lot of replicas, if you're going to buy replicas, stay clear of the ones with automatic movements. Uh, the ones that are hand-wound movements seem to be much less troublesome. Uh, and then, of course, the one I'm wearing, which is the... Uh, my AP, and this is the, the world's first um, ceramic. You can see it's got a very, very hard ceramic dial, which is worn very, very well. And then uh, it's, it's a carbon body. It's what, it, this was the first, when it came out, the first replica carbon body made using exactly the same uh, process as, uh, as the regular watches. So I'm sure with this um, video, you'll also uh, have lots of things to say. I'll get a few flames, I'll get a little bit of support, but it's uh, a very interesting discussion topic.